Whoa, what do you think of our new theme song? Come on, shift heads, tell us. Let us know. Welcome to the docket. I'm Seema Iyer, Esquire, and this is the only venue that delivers the legal stories you want to hear about. Right now, we have friend of the docket, Pennsylvania State Senator Art Haywood, joining us in studio to discuss two very important bills he is backing. Number one, the appointment of special prosecutors, and the next, raising the minimum wage. Both have are issues that have national significance. So I am thrilled to have you here today, Senator. Thank you very much, and thank you very much for inviting me to here today. Of course, you're always welcome. So let's start off. You know, Friday night, yet yes. another police shooting. Madison, Wisconsin, yes. young man Tony Robinson was only 19 years old. And here you are today, already scheduled to talk about special prosecutor yes. litigation. How did that affect you? Uh, extremely disappointing. Uh, another indication that the system of justice that we have has serious problems in it. Um, I'm not sure how this is going to be prosecuted. There's not really a special prosecutor arrangement in that state. It seems to me that if there was a special prosecutor, then the sense of trust that the system of justice will work for that victim would be higher. Uh, you can't guarantee it, but do you know there had been some protest already. Um, and I think one way to let protesters and the public understand that there's going to be a firm and accountable response to right. this kind of action sure. is having an independent investigation to yes. see what happened, and then, if necessary, prosecution. In the case of Tony Robinson, so the facts are that he was, a fact, being assaultive okay so I don't know the specifics but that's what they're saying he was being assaulted yes. so the police officer responded police officer shot him my problem with this case specifically and in general with mm -hmm. police officers is that they are trained to shoot to halt halt someone not kill them mm -hmm. so why aren't police officers acting in that capacity shoot someone in the foot shoot them in the arm but don't kill them. Yeah, and I think that the this commission that the president had looked into police practices, tried to come up with some strategies that police could use so they wouldn't have to kill someone in, in order to get control over a situation. Um, and some of that involves police training and improving the training of police. I do think, though, that in some instances, it's very hard for the police to make a judgment. And so in a... Because it's such a short time period, yeah, right? Yeah, it's so a very quick. short parent time period, and they right. don't know all the circumstances that they're confronting. Uh, but training goes a long way in terms of how to de-escalate a problem. And there's a number of mechanisms and, and approaches that police use to de-escalate. Uh, some are more successful than others, but I think that the uh, approach of getting more training uh, is important. And you've just been a senator for what, like 20 minutes right now, and already yeah. before you even got into office, you had already told us that you were intending to introduce this special prosecutor legislation. Uh, you have, in fact, drafted the bill. And it's so, been introduced. And it's been introduced, that's right. Uh, and you have co-sponsors. And are those co-sponsors both uh, Democrats and Republicans? Not yet. Okay. And we're working on getting okay. more co-sponsors. So let's talk about the specific specifics of the bill. Sure. I found it very interesting that you there's a section in the bill that says how many years experience the special prosecutor should have. Yeah. Okay, you're saying as long as an attorney has practiced in criminal defense or in prosecution for three years. That's a minimum. Now we're looking at the attorney That's general. The attorney general okay. will select a person. Well, uh, let me let me back up. Sure. Attorney general, uh, her name is Attorney General Kane. Kathleen Kane. How is uh, what's her position opinion of this? She hasn't taken a position. We've had a number of discussions with her office. Um, she hasn't said yes. She hasn't said no. Some of the legislation we crafted was in concert, uh, in conversation with her. Okay. Um, but she hasn't taken a position pro or con. And so. Three years minimum experience. That's minimal. That is minimal. And I think that's a little low. It maybe is too low. We're expecting that you the want some twenty-six year old lawyer coming in and just, you know, guns a blazing. No, we don't. <laughs> we want a highly responsible person. Right. And I'm confident that whoever the attorney general is, whether it's this one or ones in the future, will select highly competent people to, to undertake the investigations. So another part sure. of the bill is that this would only be for homicides. 
And I've asked you this question yes, before, so I'm asking it again. <laughs> yeah. well, I just think we should expand, uh, expand the law to include other types of shootings or even other types of crimes. But what's, what's your thoughts? As we discussed last time, I think I'm trying to look at the most grave situations and get support for that first. And if we can build on getting a special prosecutor law passed with the most dramatic situations, we can expand. Uh, but I want to share with you, we're having some significant opposition in moving this forward. From? Mostly from elements of law enforcement okay. uh, who have not supported the bill. Uh, there's a number of people in the other party, even in my own party, that haven't come fully around to it. I think the commission, the president's commission will help. Police Chief Ramsey was the co-chair of the commission. Right. He's the ch uh, chief of police in Philadelphia. So that commission supported independent prosecutor. So I believe that we can build on the support of the commission to, to get more support, but we've got some distance to go. When you say you're getting pushback from law enforcement, yes. how are you notified of that? Do you go to community meetings and they voice their opinions, or is this some type of backroom dealings you hear about? It's not backroom dealings. Sometimes they tell us directly in conversations that we have. Sometimes I've talked to other senators in the state senate and they say they've heard from law enforcement and the law enforcement in their community does not support this kind of legislation. So it's pretty, it's pretty direct. And one thing we're doing in response, on April the 13th, we're having a lobby day in Harrisburg where citizens from around the state are coming to lobby their legislators right. to vote for the special prosecutor law. This bill doesn't include mention of grand juries. It does not. It does not. What is your opinion? Do you have an opinion on whether we should eliminate grand juries altogether and, and perhaps have a different vehicle for justice in terms of police shootings? I think it's challenging. I haven't come to a conclusion on that, although I've seen that it's very difficult for grand juries to get to the point of indicting a police officer. Um, and so I am very concerned about that. In fact, I don't know if there's much of a record at all. There's only a few times that grand juries have done so. Um, but they have not had the evidence presented to them right. by independent I agree with that. I, I have a problem with eliminating the grand jury process, and I still think it is on some level uh, a jury of the peers or the representative of the community, and I think perhaps mm. smaller changes at first would be better instead of changing everything, right? Bringing in a special prosecutor, getting rid of grand juries. Do, and that speaks to your idea I of just approaching homicides. I think it does, but you know, there are numbers, you know there are a number of states that don't have grand juries. Right. I know. And I, I'm not necessarily in favor of that either. <laughs> so wh have you had bipartisan support with this? Not in the legislature. Okay. No, I have not. And it's going to take... Because? They haven't seen the light. What is their argument? What are they saying? I think what the perspective is, is they're following the lead of the police officers, the law enforcement community. And the law enforcement community doesn't want any more pressure on law enforcement officers. Now, I've taken the position this relieves pressure from law enforcement because you have the district attorney who's no longer got right. any kind of threat of bias. And so the whole claim that there's bias in the justice system, that's one element that we can eliminate. Right. But I do think that there's a, there are a number of people who think that this is not good for law enforcement. Okay, now I just do want to point out before we move on yes. uh, that in Ferguson, in Missouri, excuse me, in Missouri, they do have a proposed special prosecutor. There is a bill, I think it's Bill 773, but in their bill, mm. they do suggest a uh, special prosecutor for shootings and killings. So it is a little more expansive than Pennsylvania, uh, just mm -hmm. to put that out there. And I mm -hmm. think New York is also coming up with their version of a bill. Mm -hmm. But I want to discuss your other bill that you're co-sponsoring, and that's raising the minimum wage. Tell us about that. Uh, raising the minimum wage is critical for families and the entire economy. And, I, and that's a national issue. That you is agree. a national issue for a number of reasons. The main reason is a family can't survive on 725. My family tried it for a week during May. There's Was it an experiment? It was an unsuccessful experiment. So you made your family live on 725? And we had four adult earners in the family. Really? And even with the four, we could only make it four days. Oh, my God. In fact, we got into a position where we ran out of housing. So, so interesting. Yeah. In fact, when my daughter was coming from college, we didn't have enough money to pick her up from the airport. 
because we were. Oh, she we were must love money. you guys. That's <laughs> well, great. Well, she has friends. Okay, I bet she does. <laughs> so like, they picked her up. Me. So yeah, it's very challenging, and so the sense that people can make it on seven and a quarter is is, is unrealistic. And what's the status of the bill? We're getting good support. That bill has bipartisan support. The ten has bipartisan support both in the House and in the Senate. Our governor, Tom Wolf, has come out for 10, 10 an hour. Right, and so and af in uh, one year it will go up to eight dollars, well, and then it will go up to 10, 10 by 2016. This is another piece That's of legislation projection. that uh, is being proposed. Uh, there's several different pieces of legislation, but what we're looking for is 10, 10 this year. Wonderful. 10, 10, 10 this year, and I'm confident we're going to get it because we've had a lot of citizen support. I hope you come back to the docket soon, okay? Thank you for coming in person. It's so nice to meet Thank you. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Hey, YouTube fans, I'm Luke Russer. Thanks for checking out our MSNBC channel. Subscribe by clicking right here and click any of the videos over here to watch the latest breaking news, mini documentaries, conversations from Shift, and other digital exclusives. Check it out.